Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown Podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at Gator Dave underscore SEC. Coming at you the day after the Orange and Blue Game 2024 edition. Cap it off spring practice right here on Gators Breakdown. 1914, the you know, the real score, the real final. We'll get into all that in just a bit, you know, with, with the, the funky score, but we'll get into the game. We'll recap the game a bit, some key plays, some standout players, some thoughts to go along the way here. As uh yeah, you know, spring practice concluding. We got to cover this team for about five weeks now. Plenty of interviews and press conferences and all that stuff really culminating uh, in the orange and blue game. Beautiful Saturday it was there in Gainesville. Unfortunately, I was not there. I had to attend a wedding, uh, but I did, you know, watch as as good as I possibly could <laughs> in that two and a half hour window uh while uh family preparing for a wedding. So uh but yeah, yeah, lots to take away, uh of course, and what we saw. Uh, fr- fr- from that, plenty more coverage come this week through Gators Breakdown as well. Uh, but this is kind of a quicker recap, feedback, uh, thoughts, takeaways, all that good stuff uh, from the spring game. So hit that like button, subscribe right here on Gators Breakdown on your favorite podcast platform, or if you're watching this right here on YouTube and in the video version, get those notifications when you subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or YouTube. There's a new episode there. You'll be alerted right away as long as you subscribe to Gators Breakdown. Leave a comment. What were your thoughts in this orange and blue game? What did you like? What didn't you like? I'm sure a lot of polarizing opinions out there uh, of what went down Saturday afternoon in the swamp. Doing all those things really supports Gators Breakdown, helps us grow, uh, and you're keeping us keep, keeping us going, keeping us going right here on Gators Breakdown. Another way to keep us going, Gators Breakdown Plus. Your support means a whole lot there as well. You get some extra benefits. Those ad-free episodes of Gators Breakdown access to the discord chat we'll have a we'll have a chat this week coming up on gators breakdown plus got some feedback already i'll include but this chat's a really fun interaction discussion points uh with you guys there on gators breakdown plus link is in the description to join for as little as three bucks a month and one more as we've done all spring long one more big shout out to florida victorious i'm sure you guys saw all the images i saw some of the images you guys sent me uh, but a huge crowd after the game for the meet and greet to meet Coach Napier. All the players, I can't count how many messages and images I've been sent for you know, really explaining what was going on and how it, you know, kids getting happy, their favorite players' autographs, meeting the players, having conversations. I mean, hey, kudos to Florida Victorious. Kudos to Florida there for setting this up. Uh, and, and really, I mean, ton of signups. I mean, like we, we need to make a difference. Florida Victorious is the way to do that. But let's not stop there. Let's keep the momentum going. Ho- you know, hopefully, yeah, uh, some more events like that coming up. I hate if you you know, haven't been a member or can't make it that you missed out on those opportunities. But hey, look, we know NIL is the way to go right now. Keeping Florida uh, at the top of list, keeping players in the fold that are on the roster right now, getting future Gators. Best way to do that through Florida Victorious. Link is in the description to join there, of course. 20% off your first month using promo code GatorsBD. Should be much more uh, coming up there. Interviews, access, hopefully some more events in the summertime as well. Different sports involved, but one more big, big big-time shout-out, Florida Victorious. I know a lot of people were happy about what they were able to do after the Orange and Blue game. All right, guys, let's go. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the episode going and look at with the way – the spring game is, you know, spring scrimmage to to culminate spring. Look, to me, it's in its own bubble. <laughs> you know, in, in, in some ways, I do like how Napier handles it and doesn't really give uh, too much away as far as making it easy uh, to just kind of please the crowd. Of course, it'd just be easy to put some scripted touchdowns in there to get the crowd going, but Napier never, doesn't do that. You know, look, overall, like all spring practices out there, all spring scrimmages, not heavily game plan. I know people are really going to dive in and, you know, oh, it looks the same or it doesn't look any different and nothing's going to change. And, you know, I, I'm not taking too much from a two hour window. Uh, I'm, I'm just not. The two hour window is not going to change my mind for what I, you know, thought coming in. <laughs> so there's a lot more that goes behind it besides that two and a half hour window we get to watch on TV. Uh, but, you know, Napier isn't calling plays. He allows the defense to blitz, you know, a lot of. Head coaches don't allow the defense to kind of go at the offense, but uh, I, I commend him for that. 
Um, but, you know, it's not just give it to the offense kind of day. You know, this two-hour window isn't going to change my thoughts, questions, and concerns. Uh, you know, there's two scrimmages. Uh, also, that we don't get to see practices as well. Uh, so the Orange and Blue game, just one of many events that happen in spring practice. It's the only extended window we can watch, so much will be taken from it. I understand that. Uh, but the translation of ultimate determinations based on the orange and blue game, that's no go for me. <laughs> I don't make uh, I don't make determine it factors into it. Sure it does, but it's still more of a I'm making my rash decision I'm making my decisions based on what happens in the fall. Uh, I'm not gonna sway too much for you know the, the two hour window uh, that we get. Yeah, I compare it with what we've been hearing all through spring practice. That's kind of what we'll go through here and, and do in this episode. Uh, but, um, but I get it. I get it. It's the only thing we get to see. So that's going to be kind of the nature of the beast. If this is all we get to see, a lot's going to be gleaned from it. So if, you, if you're out there doing that, hey, all power to you. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're right. It's just I'm going to hold off a little bit <laughs> and not maybe overblow this a little bit too much. So uh, Blue Beats Orange wins 19-17 to 17 or 19-14, to 14, however you want to view that. We'll get into the score in just a little bit here. Uh, but let's get to a recap of the game, some key plays here. Uh, Orange team offense starts the game. DJ Lagway, of course, five-star quarterback. He comes out. Uh, play action rollout goes deep. That falls incomplete. Uh, he was sacked on second down, then overthrows on third down. So not off to a great start three and out there. Of course, he would bounce back. Blue offense comes out, led by quarterback Graham Mertz. And very first play, Trey Wilson gets involved. That pop pass for about seven yards. Uh, then you could see it was an effort here. Mertz takes a shot down the field to Khalil Jackson. Uh, that falls incomplete. But then something I wanted to see anyway. Now, look, if that deep pass would have worked, absolutely, yeah. We know that's been a focus, and that would have been good too. But after that incompletion, the very next play was third and three. And Jackson catches a slant on you know to get a first down on third and three. And look, I know it's simple. Uh, but a big fan of Jackson catching a simple third and three conversion. Move the chains. But what have I said about Jackson coming into spring practice? He's made play, he, he's made he made some highlight catches last year, some very tough catches. Can he make the routine ones? Good sign here on a third and three, getting a first down. Uh, later on in the drive, a third and four, Mertz escapes the pocket, uh, finds Wilson for another third down conversion here on the first drive. Mertz you know, felt pressure from his left side, managed to roll out uh, and rolled to his right, found Eugene Wilson, who uh, fought back, helped Graham Mertz here, uh, giving him a safe option for that throw, converting another third down, the second one of the drive. Uh, so next third down, uh, it's a third down and five. And here we go. The emergence of one Grayson Pup Howard makes a tackle uh, on a run for, for Montreal Johnson. Big, big play there for Pup Howard, uh, making his presence fail early in this orange and blue game. That sets up a fourth and two uh, that Johnson does get. Cam Jackson uh, goes down on the play, which you don't want spring practice or some injuries, uh, but he was up in Adam uh, not long after that. So, uh, Keep, keeps on driving, uh, the, the blue offense does, uh, and more plays for Pup Howard. You know, three tackles for him on the first drive for the Gators. Uh, late, late in the drive, uh, had that, um, you know, for the blue team to set up for a field goal, had a pass breakup as well, covering all this boarding him. Uh, so the blue team set us for a field goal, first score of the game, three nothing there for the blue team. So, you know, in this drive, you could see Florida trying for those downfield shots. Uh, but coverage was tight and or pressure on Graham Mertz. So Mertz had to settle for check downs. Uh, saw that a bit last season. That looked pretty familiar uh, when Florida trying to take those deep shots and just not there. Um, and, but you know, Mertz did mention a couple of times he's got to trust his receivers a bit more. So something I'll go look at and rewatch is what that pressure looked like. Was it worth taking that chance for or was checking down the right decision? Of course, a lot of that comes into play. There was pressure in Mertz's face. Were the receivers able to get separation? This is one of those catch-22 situations, right? Defense. They had their own issues in stopping explosives last season, and this offense had their issues generating them. So what do you want to see? Did you want to see the offense score on the defense that gave up a ton of explosives last year, or did you want to see the defense actually stop the explosives? There's your catch-22. 
That's the beauty or the quote unquote, maybe ugliness <laughs> of spring football. I can't tell you how you want to feel on that one. Just take it for what it's worth is how I take it. So that's why I said you can't gleam too much. You can't go take too much from it. If the offense was to hit that deep pass, it would have been, well, defense, the same old, same old, giving up another explosive. But now since the defense has some success, it was, well, maybe this offense isn't ready to take get those explosive plays yet. Lose, lose, win, win, however you want to look at it. But early, you know, early on, the defense did their part uh, in that area uh, of stopping the explosive plays. All right, so here we go. Back to the orange offense. DJ Lagway comes out. Abrams, uh, TJ Abrams gets a carry there. We have receivers, we saw the receivers get involved in the run game a bit uh, in, in those motion carries that we saw plenty of last year. Uh, TJ Abrams, carry six on the first play. But then, you mentioned Pup Howard on that first drive for the defense. But then the second drive for the orange offense, and here comes one freshman running back, Jaden Ball. Makes his present felt for the first time. Nice cut for six more, and cut he can do. Uh So six six yards on his first carry. Probably shouldn't have been that much, but able to slice and dice his way for a six-yard game. And then Lagway with a keeper uh, for a few in the next play, and then Jaden Ball one more time. Another nice cut, 25-yard gain down to the blue 24, and they're driving. Uh, later, linebacker Manny Nunnery, who I thought had a pretty good day with a tackle for loss on the second down uh, to set up Lagway on the third and eight, uh, finding Aiden Mizell over the middle, behind the linebackers, away from the safeties. There were about three defenders in the area. None could make a play on the throw DJ Lagway made. Great placement, great throw by him. I mean, it was a big-time throw and catch from two young players, true freshman DJ Lagway at the quarterback spot, Aiden Mizell, second-year receiver, 7-3 orange at this point. You know, Mizell was outrunning linebacker Jaden Robinson. Jaden Robinson was helping in coverage there. Uh, Safeties, DJ Douglas, Bryce Thornton in the area. They were split perfectly by that throw and that route. Great pass. And catch combo right there. DJ Lagway to Aiden Mizell. First touchdown of the afternoon. So then the blue offense back out. And here we go. Another running back making his presence felt. Jacoby Jackson. Community college player last year. Didn't play much for the Gators last year. Two big runs. One for 32 yards. Uh, one uh, for another of 15 with Clay Millen at quarterback. Uh, and look, i do not not sure that was planned or not because uh, Graham Mertz, I listened to the radio interview as I was driving back uh, for, for, from, from the wedding I had to attend uh, on Saturday evening. So I listened to the radio broadcast on the way uh, back to Jacksonville on Sunday morning. And with that drive, Graham Mertz was doing a radio interview. So I don't know if it was planned or not <laughs> that that million would come in, uh, but probably lets you know the kind of seriousness or lack of uh, in, in the spring uh, atmosphere. Hey, Graham Mertz is doing an interview. Okay, all right, Clay, just go ahead and go out there. We'll, we'll get Graham Mertz back in just a, in just a few minutes. So but anyway. We did see Jacoby Jackson go out there, have some big runs with Clay Millen at quarterback. One more time, 32-yard run, 15-yard run. Drive eventually stalls. Another field goal uh, there for the blue team. Uh, makes it 7-6. Trey Smack already 2-2 two for two on the day. Uh, next drive off orange offense, not doing much. Lag away, threw a bit behind on third down. That was a, a kind of there. If you want to see a third down conversion, it didn't happen on, on that play. So blue gets back the ball third and seven for Mertz, knocked away by Asa Turner. Asa Turner made his uh, presence felt, uh, maybe a pass that looked like it was going to be completed until Asa Turner quickly, quickly closes in on the ball uh, and makes a play there for the defense. So orange offense gets the ball back. Another big run for Jaden Ball, this time for 15. I mean, guys, you saw it. Nice cutting ability, nice vision. We'll get into more of that, too. A uh, few plays later, Lagway finds Taylor Spirito for a nice cross-field route, 32-yard gain. Beautiful throw by Lagway. Orange team driving. A few plays later, Aaron Gates gets into a backfield for a tackle for loss. That leads to a third and two at the seven. Jaden Ball tackled by Quincy Ivory for a short loss. He had a big day. Orange field goal missed by Hunter Smith. That would be an issue there through the afternoon. Blue offense back out on the field. Explosion. Explosion coming right here. Graham Mertz finds Trey Wilson for 20 yards. Then the very next play, Mertz finds Wilson down the field for a 60 yard touchdown. 13 7 blue team at that point. After that, after the extra point, that pass traveled about 30, 35 yards in the air for Graham Mertz. Wilson caught it, raced away for the rest and the score. 
You know, Wilson had Sharif Denson, I mean, Sharif Denson had a pretty good day. Uh, just it's hard to cover Trey Wilson. <laughs> Wilson had Sharif Denson trailing him. Triquez Bridges uh, as the safety played the corner route. Wilson stuck his foot in the ground for the corner. Bridges bit. Wilson just wide open on the post route for an easy 60-yard touchdown. Explosive play right there for the offense. So next drive for the Orange offense. Big play early from Lagway to find a diving Marcus Burke for 24 yards along the sideline. Marcus Burke with a with some, with some nice catches, mostly right here on this drive, too. He had three catches, but two of them on this drive, really, really big uh, for Lagway here. You know, alert, later on, 35 yards for Lagway to Burke over the middle. Basically, the very same route. Wilson scored that 60-yarder on. Pass was a little low from Lagway, but Burke was able to snag right above his feet while running. Sets the Gators up, first and goal at the 10. Been 14 seconds left in the first half, third and five or third and goal from the five on this same drive. Lagway finds Spirito again, this time for a five-yard touchdown on a nice little RPO from the freshman quarterback, 14-13 orange at halftime. Now, halftime stats here, Mertz was 8 of 13, 123 yards and a touchdown. Lagway, 6 of 10, 122, two touchdowns. Jaden Ball had seven carries for 60 yards. Jacoby Jackson, four carries for 62 yards. Uh, going back to Lagway there, just, everybody wanted to see how he would do and honestly how he would respond. Started one of four and then finished the first half five of five, 122 and two touchdowns. So way to respond there for DJ Lagway. Uh, pretty, pretty good there uh, for him to be able to respond uh, with, with that type of play. Um, just kind of get out of an early hole. All right, so we go to the second half. Uh, first drive. Uh, Triquest Bridges, tight coverage on Trey Wilson on first down. Uh, Khalil Jackson, another explosive play right here in the passing game for a gain of 50 on the over route from Graham Mertz. Long developing route. Mertz had plenty of time uh, down to the 25-yard line. That went second and 12, and Mertz went to DK in the back of the end zone. DK ends up in the hedges there. Uh, it was a little too deep uh, of a throw. Third and 12, Mertz finds Webb for only five. Another field goal by Trace Mack. That's good. 16-14 blue team at that point. Uh, then Jaden Ball comes back out, slicing and dicing on the third and one for a gain of three. Um, what's it tackling in the backfield uh, all day long? And look, third and one, you need those yards. Blocking may not have been the best, but slicing, dicing Jason uh, Jaden Ball uh, to get that first down. Next play, Lagway finds T.J. Abrams on a play-action rollout for 20 yards. And next play was the fail trick play reverse pass that uh, I think we all just want to throw away at this point. <laughs> so uh, then a false start made it second and 27. That eventually would lead to third and 16. And Lagway, first bad, your really bad decision on the day, forces a pass with pressure around him, picked off by Manny Nunnery. Nunnery perfectly read it, jumped the route, uh, and gets the first interception right there of the day. But that would continue. Next drive, this time for the blue offense after a few plays. Mertz does a pick of his own. Third and 13 on a pass play over the middle. Look, it was a good play by Sharif Denson. Um, not totally excusing Graham Mertz on this one. Threw it into a tight window. Uh, but Chimari DK did have a chance, but Denson was just more aggressive going for the ball. Tight window throw. One of those 50-50 balls. But it's something I wanted to see there. And something to you know, kind of a link of what we talked about through spring practice a good bit here was look, it was those 50 50 balls. Will Harris and the DBs have talked about all spring long. And this one goes to the defensive back. So when they said the ball's in the air, it's ours. On that play, it certainly looked like it. Sharif Denton was more aggressive than Team Ray DK getting the pick for the defense there. So then. Go to uh, Orange offense now. Keenan Daniels shows nice vision on the run. I mean, there's the freshman backs, man. They're, they're going to be good. <laughs> they're going to be good for the Gators. Uh, but, you know, just cuts back to the middle of the field to pick up some extra yards. Nice vision. Nice vision there by Keenan Daniels. Both freshman backs showing some great vision. Uh, but that was the highlight for there for that drive. Um, go back to the blue offense. Montreal Johnson, not much action. He comes back out with Graham Mertz on this drive. Blue offense gets, a, gets to a third and two and L.J. McCray, Sharif Denson, tackle Johnson in the backfield for a loss. L.J. McCray makes his presence felt. Two young players here. L.J. McCray, true freshman, of course. Sharif Denson, second-year player, making a big, big stop on third and two. Two players that um, Sharif Denson, you know, 
in a really, really tough as nails battle with you know, Aaron Gates, maybe maybe some others there at that nickel spot, but that's the two main guys. And then LJ McCray, of course, the five-star defensive lineman. Uh, if he's going to start making his way in the rotation, need to show some plays like this in spring. Uh, LJ McCray with a big, big-time play there. He had some pressure early on. I thought it was a pretty good showing there for the true freshman in his first spring game. Uh, Clay Millen then takes over for uh, Lagway. Um, lots of backups in now with about 12 minutes to go in the game. Um, not much happening. Most of the action was done to this point. Uh, TJ Searcy ended up with a sack of Graham Mertz later on, deep in uh, you know Mertz's blue team territory with just under five minutes left in the game. Lagway comes back out with just under two minutes left. That drive was highlighted by George Gums and Quincy Ivory teaming up for a sack for a drive that goes nowhere. Mertz comes back out for three straight incompletions. Orange team and Lagway come back out for another drive with under a minute left. That stalls. Uh, Mertz and blue team get the ball back. 22 seconds left. They're on 34-yard line. Mertz hits Webb for 11, DK for 18, Boyingham for 18, then spikes the ball with two seconds left. Some uh, very generous ge- very generous clock work there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Billy Napier kind of overruling some uh, a bit there to give some more time. Trace Mack comes out, hits the fourth field goal of the day for him. Blue team wins 19-17 with the orange team getting an extra three points for something in practice earlier in the week. Uh, real score would have been 19-14, wouldn't have come down to the, you know, the the clock, the working on the clock it, it late in the game. Billy Napier pretty much setting that up uh, there for the blue team at the end. So real score would have been 19-14, 19-17 was the year. The, the 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 final Billy Napier wanted to put on it. So there you go. There was your kind of quick recap of the orange and blue game, some key plays, uh, of course. But let's get into some specifics too right here as we look at this game. Quarterback, the quarterback play. Graham Merch, DJ Lagway, we'll start there. I thought it was a you know an average day overall for the quarterback position. You know, grading on a scale, I thought it was a pretty good day uh for 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 DJ Lagway and his first uh action like this. Both quarterbacks started slow, then turned it on. Graham Mertz finished the day 15-27, 243 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Now, let's go back to last year, of course. You know, Mertz completed near 73, you know, 72.9% of his passes last year. Only completed 56% in the spring game. Not sure, you know, this game was ever going to tell us if the experienced quarterback was going to take those necessary steps for an offense to make a jump. Uh, a focus this spring ball, of course, has been pushing the ball down the field, and that was highlighted by Merch finding Trey Wilson for a 60-yard touchdown. Uh, but, you know, as a Sharif Denson, like I said, c- just couldn't hold up in coverage. Not many people are going to against Trey Wilson. Uh, not much safety help in the middle of the field. Uh, so Wilson, of course, doing what he does. As I said, Mertz would go on to hit a 50-yard pass to Khalil Jackson as well. But, you know, overall, I thought the blue offense with with Mertz, that offensive line, just kind of looked out of sync most of the afternoon. And and Graham Mertz admitted that, too. If you watch the TV broadcast, you know, it said they were not as consistent in, in what they wanted to do on, on offense on the afternoon. So, look, it's not us being nitpicky. I think we, we saw it, and Graham Mertz admitted it as well. Freshman DJ Lagway, of course, bounced back after a slow start, started 0 for 4, finished the first half 5 of 5, 122, two touchdowns. Uh, a lot of pressure in his face most of the day with that second team, uh, the second team offensive line, of course. Um, he went on to finish the day 12 of 21, 57% passing, 173 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. I, I give him a lot of credit for settling, settling down in his first action. Made some big time reads and throws uh, with, with timing and placement. Showed command of the RPO went out there as well. Uh, that's going to be a huge part of when he's out, when, when he's out there. With of course his ability to run, uh, had some nice runs as well. But kind of hard to gauge those in the spring game when the defense knows they can't hit. He's got a no contact jersey on, so you know a, a running quarterback is really hard to gauge uh, in, in a spring game. But there's a lot to be excited about, just like we thought there would be <laughs> when we saw him in this orange and blue game. I think we also got a pretty good indication that the Gators are going to, they got to stay more running backs. You know, question will still be like how much of a ceiling, you know, will Montreal Johnson have as the top back staffs high on Webb, but didn't see much 
uh, from him as we did from the freshman back, Jaden Ball, and of course, uh, Jacoby Jackson as well. Ball, I mean, six foot, 238 pound, big back. He was a surprise player of the orange and blue game. Bigger back, but I'm telling you, showed some wiggle, some shiftiness, some vision, patience. He showed it all uh, there as a true freshman back. And I think there's one thing we know this staff can identify some running backs. Um, I don't, there's no worry there. We, we, that message has been spread uh, throughout spring practice as well. Uh, it was maybe how much can those guys take advantage of you know, Cam Carroll uh, going through injury and how much could they you know, press uh, for some playing time. Well, we heard a lot through spring practice about both you know, Katie Daniels, Kanan Daniels, uh, and Jaden Ball as true freshmen that were really turning it on. And in the spring game, though, you know, it was Jaden Ball making the most of the opportunity, slicing, dicing his way, uh, some nice cuts. He led both teams in rushing yards with 77 on 12 carries, 6.4 yards a carry for Ball. And then Jacoby Jackson, of course, this is his second year with the program, a Richard Jr. off the top of my head, I believe, coming in from community college last year. He showed nice explosion, straightforward speed on the way to leading both teams in average rush. 12 yards per carry did Jacoby Jackson have. And also the longest run of the game with a 32-yard dash in the second quarter. Of course, at the receiver position, standing out, wide receiver Trey Wilson, of course. There, it definitely was what we thought he would be. And then Marcus Burke again for the second straight spring game in a row. You know, Wilson pretty much uncoverable all spring. That continued into the spring game. Of course, he's going to be the focus of the passing game. That was apparent on Saturday. Led all receivers with eight catches, 128 yards, 16 yards per catch. You know, not a ton of huge plays last season, so that was his next step, of course. We got one in the spring game, 60-yard touchdown. Those are the type of plays this offense is going to take a step. If Trey Wilson is going to take a step, those are the type of plays we need to see on a more consistent basis. For Marcus Burke, he led the Orange team with three catches for 66 yards. Uh, you know, of course, you know, going through spring, the likely candidates to start for Florida outside of Wilson are Khalil Jackson, Shimray DK, but Burke you know, offers that position flexibility. We saw him, we even saw him get a handoff uh, in the spring game, and you know, he really needs to be in that group or that group of the next guy up. You know, throw Aiden Mizell in there too for that really nice route from DJ Lagway for a touchdown. Those two guys, those two guys really, really, when the end of the season comes around, they need to be fighting in that top three, top four to five group. You know, if, if they're all grouped together behind Trey Wilson, those two guys need to be in there. You know, this, you know, this is still, you, you throw Merck in there, you, know, you, th- you throw Mizell in there with Burke for guys that are currently on this roster, but I heard it a lot on social media, Gators Breakdown Plus, in watching the spring game, maybe still a position Florida needs to see if they can get a you know, more consistent playmaker on the outside in the in the transfer portal. So we'll see. I, I think that is certainly a, a target for this staff. If the right guys there, if the right type of players there, uh, I think with the freshmen, you've got probably what you need and how you can move Trey Wilson around as well on the inside. Chimay DK can move around a little bit as well. Uh, If you can get a true outside threat to take some of that pressure off of of Wilson, I think you got to make that move if that player is out there. Move to the other side of the ball. I think we saw the Gators have an attacking linebacker in Grayson Howard. It was apparent from the get-go, first drive of the game. He had six tackles on the day. Three of those came on his very first drive. Uh, R.J. Moten also had six tackles for the blue defense. That led the way there with Grayson Howard. But Howard, you know, even stopped that first team blue offense, that first drive with a pass breakup, guarding all the sporting hand from Graham Mertz. Um, I mean, you know, in one drive, we saw a play from a linebacker that we just haven't seen much, a versatile linebacker. I mean, he made a play in pass coverage, made plays behind the line of scrimmage. Great tackling. I mean, we just haven't seen that much of that in recent years at that position. And look, I'll stay with linebacker too. Manny Nunnery, I thought, had a pretty good day overall. So, you know, very active in the game. He had three tackles, one tackle for a loss, and an interception. So we had Pup Howard with a pass breakup in coverage, 
Manny Nunnery, you're picking off DJ Lagway there, reading it perfectly. I mean, some good play from the linebackers in the spring game. So, you know, when Shamar James comes back, I really like James and, and Howard to be the two main inside backers. Nunnery, even before yesterday, I still thought was going to get time and mainly time in that more, you know, athletic passing down scenario. Uh, but glad to see him uh, with that orange defense making some plays as well. So he was flying around. But uh, I think, you know, gives Florida with James, Howard, Nunnery, you know, we'll see what you know, Derek Wingo can offer, you know, Jaden Robinson as well uh, for, for, for that group and how much they can offer. But looking, even, you know, even taking away the spring game, I would have said there's a good chance that James Robinson, I mean, James, Howard, and Nunnery were going to be your top three. I do think the spring game probably confirmed that for me. The blue team defense collected six sacks on the day. That ties an all-time record for an orange and blue game and team with team sacks. Um, ties an all-time record with 2,000 in the 97 spring games. The edge players, Quincy Ivory, George Gums Jr. led the team one and a half sacks apiece. Ivory with six total tackles, three of them solo, two tackles for loss. Gums Jr. as a you know player. You know, Ivory kind of had the little bit of the same reputation last year. They bring in George Gums Jr. this year as just two athletic guys, not really heralded all that much, but have that athletic build that this staff probably sees that they can develop with. And well, they had some good spring games. As I mentioned, Ivory, six total tackles, three solo, two tackles for loss. Gums Jr., five total tackles. He had one solo. One, one and a half tackle for loss as well. Tyreek Sapp had a pretty good day with four stops, one of those being a tackle for loss. Tyreek Sapp had that big spring game two years ago uh, in Billy Napier's first spring. So certainly a player, uh, you know, Justice Boone not taking part uh, in, in spring practice here. Tyreek Sapp, of course, taking over for that spot he played last year. Uh, certainly, I think we need to be a player. Um, him and Boone switching in and out. I, I, I would like keeping those guys fresh. I think... Can, can be a pretty good combo there, even on the field at times together. Uh, but you're know, flipping those guys in and out. Hopefully, both raise their level of play. You don't have much of a drop off if either guy's not on the field. But Tyreek sat with a pretty good orange and blue game as well. Uh, looking at defense, some of you guys pointed this out. I think it was pretty easy to see. Tackling overall seemed much better. You didn't see many broken tackles. Now, you want to see some. Because you, know, you know your offense gets credit for that too. Some of those running backs, some of those running plays, of course, you want to see those guys break tackles. But I think overall, I was pretty happy, pretty happy with what we saw in the tackling department, the physicality department. I mean, Sharif Denson with a nice, you know, stick on Trayon Webb. Trayon Webb catches a pass. He credit to him for hanging on too. But Sharif Denson, very nice hit and tackle on him too. Did seem like you know there was some pretty good physicality uh, on the defensive side of the football. How much do you want to take away from that? That's up to you. I can't tell you how much to take away from it. I mean, last year we saw some pretty good defensive play as well. Low scoring affair in the spring game. We were hoping that would mean a turnaround for the defense. The defense got off to a you know, a, a pretty good start in the season. Maybe we thought they were turning that corner after a pretty good spring performance, after early season performance. It didn't amount to anything. It didn't turn out that way. But I did like what I saw on a Saturday afternoon in its own bubble in, this, in the orange and blue game. Uh, some concerns, I thought, uh, I, I didn't want to, we got plenty of time uh, for some concerns. Um, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have another episode later this week as well, but some I'll bring up here. We'll get into to more of it later on, but I still thought too much pressure on the quarterbacks. Uh, good for the defense, of course. Um, but you know, nothing really standing out for the offensive line, especially the transfer tackles, Brendan Crenshaw Dixon, Devin Manuel, uh, more so Brendan Crenshaw Dixon here. Um, he struggled most of the afternoon. Now he was going mostly against the first team defense. And we can hopefully turn this around and say, all right, well, better up front play for the defense. But you know, I saw struggle too many times to be too comfortable with how that played out. Overall, I thought the offensive line play was maybe average at best. There was some good blocking on some Jacoby Jackson runs, but you know, not much doing for Montreal Johnson, Trayon Webb, 
hopefully I go back again, watch the game, comparison of run blocking for each of the backs um, there. But some guys made some things happen at the running back spot. Some guys didn't uh, so much. I did think Montreal had a chance for more yards on his own, uh, but either cut the wrong way or uh, maybe too easy to bring down in some situations. But I don't think blocking was all too great uh, for, for, for him either. So, but there were, there, were, there, were, there were some of his own chances I think he could have been better at uh, at the same time. So, you know, things I want to look more at. Guys can throw your conversation, your, throw your, your thoughts in here if something you saw. But you know, defensive line play and coverage. Um, there are you know, not many explosives for the, the, the Gator offense. So take that as you will. But, of course, I think that's better for the defense, of course, and hopefully a sign that they have fixed their own issues there. Uh, but that's just something we won't know <laughs> until you know, Florida lines up against Miami uh, the the first game of the season, and even after that, of course. But uh, things I want to look more at, you know, uh, Cam Jackson went down early there uh, in the game, but how did he play? Des Watson, uh, Joey Slackman, you know, some of those new faces on the defense as well. Something I want to key in more on a, on a rewatch, the coverage on a rewatch as well. Uh, but all in all, there's – Kind of my initial feedback uh, of the spring game, the easy, the easy standouts there. We'll, we can get deeper uh, as the as the days go on. There, of course, teaming up with Will Miles, we'll get his thoughts as well. I know he's got plenty, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe there's more concerns out there as well in, our, in in a rewatch. But as I said, in this two and a half hour window, it's hard to know what to take away. I mean, I remember back in the day, what was it? Luke Del Rio going 11 11 or 14 to 14 or something like that. What did that amount to uh, after, you know, after a spring game going into the regular season? It didn't mean a whole lot. So it's just, it's really hard to know what to take away uh, here from the spring game. We'll give our, we, we, we'll give what we like, what we didn't like. Doesn't necessarily mean it plan, pans out that way. Um, so look, some of it will. Of course it will. It usually does. It's just, you know, some of it's maybe continuing from what we've seen the first couple of years. I know many of you weren't really excited about the offense and what you saw out there. Maybe much of the same didn't really get you all that excited. Uh, but I'm also, at, at the same time, I can agree with you, but at the same time, I'm pretty glad it wasn't just dialed up for the offense to go crazy uh, and some kind of set up just to make everybody feel better. Most of us can see the differences in that anyway, uh, but I, I do give credit for Billy Napier. Most of us just you know letting them play uh, and not not setting up too much. Uh, but there we go, there we go. Initial reaction right here for the orange and blue game, nineteen fourteen final. Oh, uh, and the blue team, blue team wins there. So all right, that'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. Let me know your thoughts uh, out there. Um, probably will. Include those in future episodes this week, looking back at the spring game. So let me know your thoughts out there on the orange and blue game for the Gators. And that will do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thank you for joining me on this episode of Gators Breakdown.